with the sheer amount of content I have out there of me using Studio One, I get a lot of the same questions where people see something on my screen and theirs doesn't look the same way or behave the same way, and they ask about it. So here are the top four questions that I get. Maybe you have one of these questions, so I'm going to answer it here, and everybody's happy. All right, the first one has to do with this knob at the top of my track. So you might watch one of my videos, and you'll see me working on a track, and I might adjust this gain knob at the top of the track. Why did that one move? Oh, these must be linked together. <laughs> these are grouped. Um, and you'll see me do something like this. Then you open up your system and you look and say, well, shoot, I don't have that. So here's the, the, the answer to almost to every question I'm going to cover today. The answer is look under the wrench. Say it with me. Look under the wrench. What do I mean? There are two wrenches that live inside of Studio One. The first one is over here on the top left-hand side of the mixer window. The second is up here on the top left-hand side of the arranger window. These are different wrenches with different settings, and nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, the thing you're looking for is under one of these wrenches. So um, when in doubt, when you're like, how do I do that? First place, even when, because I forget things too. First place I look is the wrench. So in the mixer specifically, when I click on the wrench, I get basically these check boxes for a bunch of different Studio One preferences. Now, the thing that makes this maybe a little confusing for people is you can get to some of these preferences in other places, right? You can go into the big Studio One preferences window that has all your preferences there. A lot of these live there as well. This is kind of easy access for those, um, the ones that you might find yourself needing to go to regularly. So it's organized nicely, but one of the first questions I get is about this this thing up here, this gain knob. And you may think, well, what's that called? Is it called gain knob? No, probably not. It's actually called input controls. This is the input to each of these vertical channels in Studio One. So if I check, if I de-check that box, those controls go away. So if you're looking at it like this and you don't see those controls, click the wrench. We need a t-shirt that says click the wrench. Um, and then select the box that says input controls and those controls magically show up. What are these controls, you ask? These are simply a gain knob at the top of the chain. This is before the signal. It's basically the audio comes from the audio track here, goes through this gain knob before it goes through the plugins. It's got top to bottom signal flow. So the signal starts here and goes down, just like it does on an analog console. This is like the trim knob or the gain knob or the preamp knob at the top of the console. And this is a simple polarity switch button. So they're all available here. Historically, if you wanted to do this, Years ago, you would use Mix Tool because we didn't have this option a couple of versions ago. So you would use Mix Tool, which had the ability to adjust the volume and to invert the polarity, also block DC offset, which I will never understand what that is and what it does. And I'm okay with that. Uh, but now, instead of having to put a plug in across each channel, this is a big part of my workflow. When I'm adjusting bigger gains, kind of getting my, my gain staging together, doing the static mix of my mix session. I use this a lot. Now you know how to get that in your song. Second most famous popular question is, how do I get folder contents to match the folder color itself? So I'm a big fan of folders. And what typically happens, let's, um, let's pretend like we just dragged these files into our song. And let's say they're all different, different or something like brown. Right? Why we have brown, I don't know. And the one of the ways that I teach organizing your sessions, you drag all the tracks in, and then you've got these folder tracks set up, and you drag the folder into the folder, or you drag the track into the folder track, and that does a couple of things. It takes the folder, it, I'm sorry, I can't talk. It takes the track, it routes it to a bus associated with that folder. So if we put this folder down here, if we expand things out, you'll see that this folder currently... Oops. This folder by default isn't associated with the bus. But if I come in here and I select one of these buses here, there's a drum bus there, or I choose to add a bus channel if there's not one already, now this folder track also acts like a bus track. It's kind of doing double duty. Now, when I drag files into this folder, they go from being routed to the main output. See this track right here? It is routed to the main out, but when I drag it into the drums folder, it's now routed to whatever the 
bus that's assigned to that folder. So now this is routed to the drums. So it's basically a simple way of me moving a track, getting it organized, but also getting it routed to the correct place in one fell swoop. But what you'll notice also is this changed to blue, which was the color of the bus itself. If you are using this for the first time, you might drag your tracks in, and you're doing everything kind of the way I showed you. You grab all your tracks, you drag them into this folder, and they don't, they're not the right color. Like instead of turning blue like they're supposed to, they stay their original color. There's a simple solution. I bet you didn't believe it. This one you actually, I believe, have to, I'm going to check because it's always, I always forget where it is. Yep, it's not here. You have to go in the proper Studio One Preferences window. And then you come under, I always forget where it is. I believe it's under Appearance. No, it's not. It's under Advanced. Here it is. Under Advanced Editing. I can never remember that. I don't know why. This is the setting you want to check. Apply Folder Track Color to Content. If your folders are not changing the color of the track that you drag into them, it's because this is not selected. Check that box. Hit the Apply button. Hit OK. And now it works like it's supposed to. Another question that I get, someone might say they've got a new song and they create a bus for some of their tracks. And when they create the bus, let's say we want to create a bus for, you know, a, a handful of tracks because they're all kind of similar tone and I want to run them through a bus and EQ them together, whatever the case may be. They create the bus and the bus shows up on the far right hand side of their console and they go to try to move it back to where they want it to be next to the tracks and it won't move. What's going on there? That one's really simple. Guess what? We check the wrench and the very first section has to do with grouping. Keep bus channels to the right needs to be deselected if you want to be able to move those buses wherever you want them. For me, I actually enjoy my effects channels always being to the right, my VCA channels always being to the right, but I do like to keep my buses where I create them. So if I wanted to create a bus for... Uh, these toms, for example, I do that a lot. If I want to treat them and EQ them the same, I'll select them, hold down, hit one, hit shift, hit the other one. Then I'll choose add bus for selected channels, and it pops up right here. So I can name this toms, and it's right there. So these two feed that bus. That makes sense to me. If I did not have that setting deselected, here's what would happen. I would go here, Keep bus channels to the right. So I think that may be the default behavior. So if I came in here and I said, hey, you two, I want you to have your own bus. And I say, add bus for selected channels. I don't see the bus. Suddenly I see, oh, it's way over here. Why is it way over here? Because that's the way Studio One works by default. It puts the buses over here. It's a lot like an analog console. You've got your channels and your buses. They're separate. You can't move them, right? Well, in Studio One, I like to move them. I like to have them wherever I want them. And that's why I deselect this button there. Cool? All right, great. Final question, question number four that I get all the time. And I don't do this as much lately, but in case you've seen a video where I've got this big level meter in my session that goes from like bottom to top of the window, big, huge, good looking level meter. It's actually really simple. It's the level meter plugin inside of Studio One. I put it here at the very end of my chain in the post section of the main output. Then I double click I open it up, and when you open yours, it might look like this. And so if I hit play, you'll see there's signal going through. I'll set this for mixing. I'll set it to K20. For mastering, I'll set it to K14. But what happens is it looks like this, right? It's a horizontal meter. I can put it wherever I want. Or if you just click and drag in the corner of the window, check this out. First of all, I can make it thick. I can make it really wide. Or I can drag it this way, and at some point it flips to being a vertical meter which is glorious. And so I can set it to be full height and I can even adjust the width if I want. I do something like that usually. Then I'll click the little pin here so that it stays open all the time and I'll usually set it right over here on the right hand side of my session. I'll actually, what I'll usually do is move this window over and then put this one here and then line this up there. So it literally stays here always. So when I go open up another plugin, this meter literally lives there and never moves because I've got it pinned open. I've done that before. It can be really handy, especially if you're just setting levels and you want to be able to see what's happening on your main output. It's the exact same thing you see here. It's just way bigger. So you can see it from across the room and it kind of looks cool. So 
If you want to incorporate that into your workflow, you absolutely can. It's just a plug-in built into Studio One, and I bet you didn't realize you could resize the window, but you can. All right, that's it for my four most commonly asked questions. Thanks for watching. If you have a question, you can leave one in the comment. I'll see you later.